What was once a basic line drawing of a smiling fellow with a paint can for a face has now grown to be a 3D rendered character who stands to represent all that the Harris brand stands for, which is service with a smile. Not only a collection of words, the Little Man book also has great photos in it, many of which chronicle things like auto racing and sailing, which were the passions of our founders, but are still part of the events and initiatives we support to this day. There are excerpts in the book from some of our customers, including our very first customer, Mr. Alfred Pragnall, who eventually become, became one of our greatest advocates and spokesmen. Mr. Pragnall was such a staunch supporter of Harris that he suggested we rename Bone White into Bajan White and complained that he was Blue Vex for not being asked to advertise for us sooner. Tracy Johnson, who was the principal researcher and writer of the Harris Paint story, also found very, a, a wide range of many amusing anecdotes from our staff. For example, Wendy De Del Castillo told her of how Mr. Johnson used to have very long telephone conversations in which he would lean back in his chair and lay float. The staff soon determined that the best way to tell that he was to a call and ready for the next one was to wait and listen for his chair to squeak, which was to signal that he was back upright and therefore off the phone. I do know then that there'll always be a need for a company that can produce world-class coatings embellished with a unique local touch that comes from being part of the fabric of the Caribbean. I do know that the company that never sits still, that continually reinvents itself by listening to the changing needs of its customer base, will always be a company in demand. And I do know that the company that is blessed with world-class strategic partners, from the bank that provides financial insight rather than just lending us money, to the agencies that enable us to tell our unique story in a novel and compelling way, to the raw material suppliers that consistently provide innovative coating solutions and not just raw materials, then that will be a company with a very rich future. Above all, I do know that a company that is willing to listen and learn from its past, to listen to its employees now so that they become fully engaged in our future, to realize that you get nothing in life without the willingness to demonstrate resilience, tenacity, creativity, and good old-fashioned common sense when the need arises. A company that respects its rich heritage and the community in which it seeks to live and prosper. Well, if a company can do all of that, then it doesn't matter if that company is one day, one year, 40 years, or 400 years into the future. The chances are that this is a company that will deliver on its promises to its shareholders, its customers, its partners, and its employees. In the early 70s, finance was really tough to get. When I hear fellas talking about the finance today, they don't have a clue of what it was like 30 years or 40 years ago. And when one of my early suppliers, Mr. Albert Kerchase of Kemo, represented here tonight by his successor, Mr. Bill here, asked how much per month I intended to sell. I boldly said 100,000 per month. He then said, well, in that case, you will need $500,000 in working capital to finance those sales. And he was right. The fight to raise working capital through shares and borrowings was much tougher than today. So to all my friends and family who assisted in grips and drafts, I say thank you, because we could never have made it without you. The engineer who built the first factory, a Mr. Warren Lynch, told me that I may think that building the factory was a tough task, but he said, Selling the products are a much tougher deal, and he was right. The little man, of course, in 1970 is not so little anymore. Uh, Paris Paints is now manufactured in four different countries, namely Jamaica, Guyana, St. Lucia, and Dominica. It employs close to 300 people and exports to all of the CARICOM territories and a few other countries in the Caribbean as well. Our Spain's expansion and success is underpinned by four guiding principles, which apply as much today as they did in the beginning. 
a winning can-do attitude, confidence in quality of its products, and its belief to deliver quality custom service. This has been recognized through many, many awards over the years, and I would not attempt to list them all, even though they were provided. Uh, but the more significant one, I think, is what has happened recently. The Barbados National Initiative for Service Excellence, it's a nice competition, 100 improvements in 100 days. The Caribbean Champions of Color earned four of the five top prizes, including, yes, Minister's Award, but also the Efficiency Improvement Award, Personal Development Award, and Environmental Responsibility Award. I congratulate you on these achievements, not merely because they are four awards, but because of the cross-section of those awards. Efficiency and personal development and environmental responsibility shows that this is a company that is not only looking at reducing the red on the financial statement and increasing the black. It's not only about profit, but embedded in the operations of the very company is a sense of corporate social responsibility.